Hey, and welcome back to my new series for wedding videography. This episode is all about the ceremony. This series is aimed at wedding filmmakers who have maybe been filming weddings for a year or so to absolute beginners and just to give you the confidence and to see what it's like to film a wedding with, um, without actually being at one. So it's gonna be more like a behind the scenes, but without actually going behind the scenes. So I'll be discussing the exact settings I use, camera placements, the type of shots, what the ceremony will look like, um, and I'm gonna break down the other parts of a wedding day as well. So please like and subscribe, make sure you hit that bell so you're notified on the other videos that I make. I'm hoping to do about six videos um, breaking down each element of the wedding day. My last video was all about prep, and um, if you haven't watched that one already, it's worth watching that. That one's mainly aimed at bridal prep because the majority of weddings I film is just the bridal prep, um, but I do talk about groom prep there as well. So let's look at the equipment that I use to film a wedding ceremony. As usual, I have my trusty C200, which I'm filming on now, with the uh, Rode NTG4 Plus mic um, connected to that. My B cam is my new R5C, again from Canon, um, absolute beast of a camera. I'm so glad I purchased that a few months ago, um, but I'll talk about that another time. Um, but yeah, like I said, I love that camera. On that is the uh, Rode Mic Pro. And again, I have all my equipment listed on my website if you want to check it out in more, in more detail. Um, and that, that camera sits on a lightweight tripod. Um, and then I have, audio-wise, I have the, um, the Sony TX650s, um, my Zoom F1, and these Rode stickies. Um, these stickies that I attach, they're called Rycoat, and I attach the uh, Zoom underneath the jacket of the groom. My lens that I have on uh, my C200 is the Canon 24-70. And the lens that I have on my R5C is the 16 to 35. Now I bought these two many years ago um, and I am looking to get maybe a 70 to 200 mil as well. Just to give me a few more options. Just generally, I also have a collection of mic cables and I have a, a Zoom H1 and a Zoom H5. Um, so these can come in handy um, and as backups as well. So as I've mentioned before, um, I always film with my C200 with 25 frames per second, shutter speed 50, um, and in C-Log, so in C-Log 3, but because it's C-Log 3, my ISO base has to be 800. Um, if it's dark, you know, sometimes churches get dark or the ceremony room that you're in um, at a venue might not have any lights or windows, um, especially in winter time, I will boost my ISO settings, um, but mainly that is 800. Um, and my f-stop for a ceremony is usually around 5.7, um, but I'll talk about that at their different scenario when we later in this video. Uh, white balance, if it's if I've got a lot of light coming into the room, then it's always on uh, 5600 Kelvin. Um, sometimes I do auto white balance it as well, uh, but shooting in C-Log gives me the ability to adjust the white balance in post-production as well. Um, one thing I have been doing, and I might change this this year, but um, I actually don't film in 4K. Uh, everything is still delivered in HD um, and I might do another video on this just to talk about the pros and cons um, but funny enough with my B cam so my um, Canon R5C I actually film in 4k um, just because I can crop in so basically I can leave it nice and wide um, and then I can crop in especially if it's just on the side unmanned but Similar to my C200, these settings will be the same. It will be, um, I'll match the white balance. So if my C200 is on auto, I'll make sure the R5C is. Um, F stops around the similar sort of um, magic number, 
between sort of anywhere between 5.7 to to 8. Um, again, ISO is 800 because I'm shooting on C-Log3. Um, and I'm in 25 frames per second and a 50 shutter speed. Now with my audio settings, with my uh, Sony TX650s, I have it on the LPCM 44.1 kilohertz at 16 bits. And for my Zoom F1, which, like I said, I bought this bit of kit many, probably about five years ago. I think they're on the Zoom F3s now. Um, but I've got my um, recording format at 48 K kilohertz at 24 bits. Um, I've got a limiter on and my recording level is high minus. And these are the settings that I've always used and work out pretty good to be fair. So let's look at a typical wedding ceremony. Um, I, I love to be there about half, at least half an hour before. Um, sometimes you are in a bit of a rush, so it can be 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, between 10 to 30 minutes is the time I like to be before the ceremony. I like to film the guests arriving, sitting in their seats. I like to film bridal party arriving. Then the ceremony kicks off. Um, it's all go, go, go. There may be readings in the ceremony. They'll do their vows, ring exchanges, straight into the first kiss. Everyone cheers. They sign the register and finally walk back down the aisle. And that is ceremony done. If it's a civil service, sometimes this is done in 10 minutes. If it's a church, um, there can be a lot more talking from the priest or vicar, um, a lot of hymns as well. But for today's video, I want to talk mainly about um, civil ceremonies, but you can use the same concept at a church. So my strategy for a wedding ceremony, I will mic up the groom with the Zoom F1 um, and I hide it in his, in his jacket pocket and I use that mic for um, the bride as well. So I'll use... Don't put it on the bride, but I'll use the audio captured from the groom's pocket when the bride does her vows. I will then put a Sony TX650 on um, the registrar or the priest if he lets me. Um, to be fair, I've had actually I've had quite a good runnings with priests now. Um, they're usually they're usually okay, but in the past sometimes they can be quite strict. Um, and then. Whoever's doing a reading in the ceremony, I will mic them up as well. Um, and this is usually stuff that we've talked about in the pre-wedding ceremony. Um, I did get caught out at the beginning of last year. So last February, um, there was a singing bridesmaid. They let me know. I just found this out as I've sort of got to the ceremony room because I'd noticed there was a soundboard. Um, which looked a bit unusual because I filmed at that venue lots of times and I was like, why is there a soundboard there? Um, luckily, I went to my trusty um, bag of cables and plugged my, I think it was my Zoom F1, um, sorry, Zoom H5 into the soundboard and managed to get a feed from, from the soundboard as the singing bridesmaid came down the aisle. And then part of my strategy when it comes to... Um, getting the type of shots that I like. I like to film um, the groom standing at the front, and this might be shot from the back of the ceremony room um, or next to him. Um, I like to get guests walking in. I like to get them sitting down. If I'm outside with the brides and bridesmaids, I like to get the bride arriving. But I, I never think that the bride looks very flattering getting out of a car, in my personal opinion. And they are the sort of the pre wedding sh ceremony shots I like to get. Um, I'll try and maybe get some venue shots as well, but I'll talk about that in another video when I talk about um, the timings of the day and when I like to get those shots. So now I'll talk about camera placement. So with my B cam, if there's enough room at the front, I always have them on the side facing the groom. Um, if I can't get one there, I then try and have it at the back of the room as well. Um, one wedding, one church wedding I was at, um, all the readings were going to happen on the other side. It was a big, massive, massive church, plenty of room. But because of where 
they were going to read, my camera would have been in the way of that shot. So they had a balcony and I had it at the back there, which made a lovely shot. And being in 4K, um, I could crop it in sometimes. Um, usually I don't like that shot where I can see myself with a photographer in it, but um, I just had to use it in this, in this case. So the brides and the bridal party will all walk down the aisle and that's where I try and get central. Um, and it's key to chat with your wedding photographers. Usually they, they're pretty sound um, and they, they're kind of working with, well, you are working together, but they like that same shot. So you both be down quite central getting the aisle shots. Um, and then once you got that, my A cam, I will be on the other side to my B cam pointing towards the, the bride. But before I've gone there, so once um, sort of the bride's walked in, the dad or whoever's giving the bride away gives a kiss, shakes a hand, I will then quickly check on my B cam just to make sure it's in the right position because sometimes the registrar moves the couple, gets them to where they, they might need to be um, or they've stood too close. Um, whatever it is, I will then just make some adjustments if I can. Um, but the beauty of it, I'm shooting on nice and wide and I'm in um, 4K. Then that's when I move to the other side and I try and stay there the whole time. Unless someone's doing a reading, then I'll get the angle to wherever I need to be for that reading. Once I am in that position, I try and keep the same kind of shots um, throughout the whole ceremony but there are a couple of, of close-ups and other shots I do like to do. So um, the registrars always give the same opening um, line and I use that opening line, not in their full ceremony, um, but I use that when I use that audio when I overlay guests arriving and the groom there, maybe a drone shot coming in, um, welcoming everyone there. So I use that time to get shots of um, the bride's family, bridesmaids, the groom, the groom side, um, whilst everyone's sort of sitting down. And then I can use these shots a bit later on in the wedding in the film. Um, and that's a bit of a technique I like to use, work, works very well. The other close-up shots I like to get is of the ring on the bride. So when the groom's placing the ring on her finger, um, knowing that I've got my B cam, capturing that angle if I need it, I can then do a close up of the ring. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those shots I love to love to do. And then again, first kiss um, at the end, kind of from where I've been. So the registrar will always do a long talk um, after all the ring exchanges and vows, and then um, they'll do their kiss. So yeah, try not to move. Keep things simple. I used to really stress when I was first starting out with the ceremony. Um, and it can, especially if you've got one camera, it can get a bit tight if you're trying to produce a full ceremony video um, from the one angle. But if you've got that B cam as a safety angle, it, that just works really well and takes the stress away. So after the ceremony, um, they always sign the registrar, um, and in the UK, randomly, they think you, you can never film them signing the actual registrar. So this gives me a bit of time to, I move my other B cam back down um, to the back of the ceremony, so nothing's in view. Um, and I love to get a shot of, um, sometimes from a distance, of the bride and groom standing there, um, signing the registrar, and then once they, allow the photographer and videographer to capture the, the fake sign-in. Um, I just let the photographer pose them um, and then I'll just get a shot of them sitting there. And then I head and, but in this case, I change my camera settings and I film in um, 50 frames per second. So then my shutter speed will be double that. So it'll be a hundred, um, but everything else is the same. Whatever C-Log set it, C-Log three, whatever ISO I've been using for the ceremony, that will mainly stay the same. Um, so I film that in slow-mo, and then I'm already in the right settings I need for when the registrar says our final bit and they walk down the aisle. I, lo I always love to get that captured in slow-mo. So let's talk about 
autofocus and manual focus. So for the majority of the wedding ceremony, my A cam will be on manual focus. I will have, I'll capture the bride walking down on manual focus. And this is where I like to have my f-stop around 5.7, um, which gives me the ability to keep more of the aisle in, in focus rather than having a shallow depth of field. Um, and again, it, the camera is not going to be, sometimes if she's walking down the camera is trying to find focus and it's literally zooming in and out, trying to find focus, it's going to ruin that shot. Um, and that's why I also keep it in manual focus when the bride's doing her, well, for the, for the whole ceremony. So when she's doing her bows, um, it's not trying to find focus and ruining that shot. Um, but for my B cam, I actually have this on autofocus because there's, once she's in place and that's going to be, so once the bride's got down to the front and they're in place, there's not going to be much movement there. Um, and the camera would have found its um, autofocus point. And again, I'm, in, I'm shooting in um, f-stop around 5.7 or even, even higher. Um, so it's gonna keep more of that shot in focus. But I do switch to autofocus once they're walking back down the aisle. And that is the ceremony done. You can relax, get the mic off the groom or whoever's done all the readings and the registrar. Make sure the registrar doesn't run off with uh, with your Sony TX650s. Little tip, I've got um, my business name on the back, mobile number, um, and I label each one of these because I've got about six of these. Some things to remember. Ceremony rooms can be tight for you and the photographer. Um, a couple of times I've actually had to change my camera lens on, on this camera to my uh, 16 to 35, because my C200 has a slight crop factor I was a bit too close, close with that. Um, might be too tight to get your other camera there as well. So, because um, the registrars, there's usually two of them. One sits on a table um, and things can be tight. I usually film the same venues now because I've been doing it over five years. Um, I'm used to going to the same venues. I know what they're gonna be like. Uh, but that, like I said, that just comes with experience and many years of filming at the same venues. Vickers um, can restrict you. They can say you can only stand there. Um, don't stress it. I always talk about this in a pre-meeting now with my brides if they're getting married at a church. I say restrictions can be tight. If I'm filming a uh, church ceremony, I will also put my audio recorders um, around in different places uh, just to pick up people singing the hymns. Um, and especially if I'm not allowed to mic up the, the vicar, um, sometimes they stand at a sort of like lectern, it usually looks like an eagle, um, and I usually have a little microphone there. And it can be worth mentioning this in your contract that you can be restricted, um, so you've got zero stresses on the day. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, I've got more videos on the different scenarios during the wedding coming out every week. Um, so make sure you like and subscribe, hit the bell button, and you will be notified. So see you in the next one. Bye-bye.